<laughs> so how are you feeling about meeting Naomi today? What are you expecting? Well, I always look forward to meeting new people and I've only recently heard about her. And all I have read of hers was that speech she gave in Sydney when she was raising real doubts about the motives of some of those on the sceptical side of the argument. Well, I actually lived in Australia in the early 80s. I was a mining geologist working for Western Mining Company based in Adelaide, working in the outback of South Australia. And it was a great time. I loved Australia, loved the work I did. And then I came back to the States and sort of evolved my career into history of science because I was really interested in the question of how scientists decide that they have enough information to say that something is established scientifically. And the accumulated scientific evidence is overwhelming, that the globe is warming, and that the major driver, there are other causes as well, but the major driver is greenhouse gases, of which the most significant is carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. So that is, in the scientific community, really in a sense indisputable. And to reject that would be equivalent to rejecting the idea that earthquakes are caused by plate tectonics, or that vaccinations prevent disease. And I'm sure you don't reject those things. So that makes me wonder if the reason you want to reject the science is that it has consequences. It has consequences for us about how we live our lives, how we run our economy, what our taxation policies are, and that's your territory, sure, right? Sure. And so I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, yeah. I think that what you don't like are the implications, the political and social and economic implications. But what you've done along with a lot of other people is instead of having let's talk about those implications let's shift the debate let's argue about the science let's keep the debate about the science going because as long as we argue about the science we don't get to this other question about mm -hmm. what it means for us socially economically and politically yeah I, I, obviously the two are linked you cannot separate them and so for people like me having been in public life and in government right if if very significant economic change is being proposed as a mechanism for dealing with a problem. You've got to be damn you, sure. You've got to, you've got to be damn sure <laughs> right. we've got I, a real problem here. I agree with here. you about that. I agree that, completely. That, We're talking mm. about a complete transformation of the energy system, right. which is the basis of our economic activity. Mm. So I think you're 100% correct to say we want to make sure that we move mm. forward with confidence that we're basing our decisions on good information. Yep. But here's the thing, mm -hmm. you're not doing that. Because mm -hmm. by rejecting the science, you're actually making a decision on bad information. You're accepting information for people who have their own reasons, motivations for denying the science, motivations that do not come out of problems in the scientific evidence. People I've studied, one of the things that they feared was a kind of massive government intrusion in our private lives. Yeah. And I agree with them on that. I don't want the government sure. telling me what to do. But the longer we wait, the worse this problem gets. And the longer mm. we wait, the more likely it is that we're going to have to do things that you don't like. If we start doing it now, we can have an orderly transition. If we wait until we have a crisis, then there's going to be panic. And then I think it's going to be much worse. And then I think mm. you're going to see a lot of government interventions that you don't want to see at all. 